In this video, we're going to solve our first example using newton raphson's method. Example 5.1, use Newton's method to approximate the positive root of the function y equals x squared minus 2 within an error of 10 to the minus 8. Now, notice two things here if you've been following along. First of all, we're looking for the positive root, and so we're estimating the root to within 10 to the minus 8. So that's double the precision of what we had for the same problem using the bisection method that took 14 iterations. So we're going to do 10 to the minus 8 and see how quickly it converges. When this works, it really works. Okay, so what is our goal here? Our goal is to approximate the square root of 2 so that two successive iterations, remember we said that with newton raphson's method, the way you get your error on the root is you find two successive iterations that differ by less than your error, which here is 10 to the minus 8. And we need to check, is the function differentiable? Yes, it's a polynomial. And what point should we take as our starter point? Let's see what this looks like. We know basically what it is. What we're going to do is try the point 1, which looks like it's closer, and then we're going to try the point 2 and, and see if they both work and which one goes faster if they both work. So we will try x equal to 1 and then x equal to 2 and see which one goes faster. So let's go to GeoGebra and do our work. Okay, so here is our GeoGebra worksheet. First, I want to point out to you how much less information we have to work with with newton raphsohns method. We have the number of iterations, a point, the f of that point, the derivative of that point, and calculating the new point. Then we calculate the error. That's it. No more. So let's go down here to our input bar and input our function. It was f of x equal to x squared minus 2. Our error, error, we're stu still in the input bar, is 1 point capital E to the minus 8. Now let's go, just go ahead and mark the root here. So root, and we'll take function initial x value. That's the one that uses Newton's method to calculate. So we put f here, and let's put our 1 here. And you might say, oh, we're ready to start. Not quite. We need the derivative. So we're still here in the input bar, and we start typing derivative. And we pick up this command, derivative function, and we put f in there. And it will even say f prime of x equals 2x. And that's just a single quote. We don't really want to see it over here. So we're going to go over here to the little marble and click to turn off the derivative. OK, we're ready to start. We're just going to pull this down here and pull this up here. And I'll bet we have plenty of room. So we put in 1 here, as always, and then we move up so this is equal to a capital A 2 plus 1 pull down our iteration block over here we said we were going to do our first run with a starter point of 1 this is just equal to f of whatever address b2 right now let's go get our formulas for the tangent slope and xn that's these two formulas so we'll just copy them in so we can see them where we're working so here we are at the tangent slope, and what does it say? Just take f prime of x n minus 1. So equal f, I said the prime is just a single quote, and then we need the address b2. That's it for the tangent slope. Here we have equals x n minus 1, so, so b2 minus f of that, c2, divided by the tangent slope, d2. And that's that. And then over here we have the error. So equals abs of, what do we need? e2 minus b2. And we want that to be less than the error. And it's false. OK. So let's see what we need. We need to decide what our new starter point is. And of course, it's this one here. So all we do here is equals e2. 
and our table is completely ready to go. So now we click here in the middle and drag over and then pull that down. Then click here in the middle and drag these over until we get true. That's a false, false, false. That's true. Five iterations to get true. 10 to the minus eight. It took us 14 iterations on the bisection method to get 10 to the minus four. So let's mark this as green. This is our one that we want, and this is our number of iterations. So it took us five iterations using the starting value of one to get to get 10 minus eight close to the root. So this is our answer with nine decimal places plus or minus 10 to the minus eight. So now we wanna change our starter point to be two here. So let's first save this with a red one for the one so we can see it and make a copy of that. Okay, so we've saved this one where we have one as our starting point and now we're going to go back and do two as our starting point. So we want to change this cell to be two now and see if we see any difference. We see these values changed but nothing else changed here. So let's mark this one with blue so we can see the difference and take a copy of that. So here are our two calculations. Again, we can check and see that we got exactly the same answers here, but we can see that it actually is calculating differently, two and four here, but it got this 1.5 for the tangent in both places. And so then from there on, it was the same. So it took us five iterations to get to twice the accuracy of 14 iterations with the bisection method. Answer is the positive root, and then we copied out nine of those decimals, plus or minus 10 to the minus eight. And we got that result with five iterations in both cases, when we used a starting point of one and when we used a starting point of two. By the way, you should notice that we cannot use a starting point of zero since the derivative of the function at zero is zero and that will kill that denominator. And with that, we have finished example one of Newton-Raphson's method.